Hello, and welcome to another newsletter from Construction Programs and Results. I'm Michael Stone, and I will be sharing our newsletter with you. Just a quick reminder today that you should be well into your 2023 year-end review and planning time for 2024. By, by, by guess and by golly is not a strategy that leads to good results. Keep in mind also that to make achievable goals for 2024, you need to do a thorough and accurate review of this year, 2023. The drill is work. No two ways about it. But again, those that do the drill and put their best effort into it almost always achieve their goals for the year, and often those goals are accomplished by late September or early October. Wouldn't it be nice to coast the last two months of each year knowing that all your financial goals have been reached and every dollar earned was profit? Those that do a good job of year-end review and planning the next year know exactly what I'm talking about. Please remember that your year-end review and planning for the next year can't be done in a weekend or even a week. This exercise takes at least five to six weeks to get done accurately. Any, time, any less time spent means you have not done your review or your planning in an organized and systematic way. You're taking shortcuts and your results next year will show that. Let's get after this project, gang, and show everyone that you are on top of your game. Now, our newsletter. What the future holds. It's almost the end of the year again, and that's a good time to look at how you have been doing business. What standards have you set for your performance, and are you keeping those standards? How I wish each of you could be a mouse in my pocket for just one day. If you were, you'd hear the complaints I hear both about general and specialty contractors who don't answer the phone or return their phone calls. They show up late, if at all. They don't bother to clean up after themselves. Those are probably the most common complaints we hear about contractors. Sometimes I hear those companies' <clears throat> complaints. Try it again. Sometimes I hear those complaints from the buying public, and many times I hear it from other contractors. When I got into this business back in the 1950s, I did what I was told and I did it well, or I got a boot in the behind, literally. Quitting wasn't an option because we lived in a small town and there weren't that many jobs. If you wanted to earn money, you did the job the way it was supposed to be done in a timely manner or they'd find someone else to do it. It wasn't like the, the, the workers like, it wasn't just the workers like me who needed to perform well. The business owners also made sure they did their job, did it well, and in a timely manner, or they'd be out of business. If you lived in a small town like we did, that could happen rapidly. Are you returning every call the same day or by 9 a.m. the next morning? If not, why not? You aren't too busy. That's an excuse. The truth is, you're either too disorganized or your business is a hobby and you don't care about the details. That is reality. <clears throat> Do you show up for every appointment and on time? When you set an appointment, you're giving your word you will, you will arrive at the appointed time. Would you want to do business with someone who doesn't keep their word? Are your jobs kept clean? You made a mess, so you clean it up. No one else should have to pick up after you. Your mom doesn't work here. Do you set job schedules and hold to it? Setting a job schedule shows your client you're serious about the job and it helps you stay on track to get it finished on time. Things happen, but fewer bad things happen when you have a schedule like a Gantt chart. Too many construction business owners today seem to think the world revolves around them and they can do as they darn well please. Truth be told, in many cases, they're right. They don't have to answer the phone or return calls. They don't have to show up on time or at all. They can leave their jobs a, be, a big, huge mess, and if the other guy doesn't like it, that's their problem. This is often a product of a good economy. It won't always be like this. 
The construction industry, just like the economy, has cycles. When it's good, like it is right now for some of you, it's great. But that's when it's easy to slack off. You can't alienate the buying public and or your fellow contractors and expect them to forgive and forget when you need them. If you don't do the simple things that a responsible business owner should do, don't expect to have a long-term future in this business. I don't know what next year holds. For those of us here in the United States, it will be a political volatile, but we've had so much of that already, maybe it'll just be background noise and the economy will move on like always. On the other hand, it's been strong for many years and there are signs that things are changing. Whatever happens, aim to make 2024 better than 2023. Make a plan so you have a goal to shoot for. We always recommend year-end review and planning an exercise where you look at how you did this year, sales, overhead, production, profitability, what you like to see next year, sales, volume, and profitability, and how you're going to make it happen. We discussed this above. The exercise also involves reviewing what went right and what went wrong with clients, jobs, contracts, employees, subs, and suppliers, and more. <clears throat> We covered this exercise in detail in Year-End Planning Parts 1 and Part 2. The link for those papers is below. <clears throat> when you make your plan, you set the standards for how you operate. Make those standards public so you can be held accountable. Our standard is outlined in our mission statement and explained in what we believe. One final thought here. Over the last 20 plus years, we've had many clients who used our two papers and walked through the planning process for the upcoming year. Those who gave it their best effort and then followed through often hit their sales and profit goals by, by the beginning of the fourth quarter. They didn't let things happen or make excuses because things did not happen. They got in, did the work, and enjoyed the fruits of their labor. We've seen many contractors reach 10% net profit, some as high as 15 to 20%. That is what can happen when you set your goals and make them happen. Why leave things to chance? If you know another contractor who doesn't run their business like they should, send them a copy of this post. We like to see the good guys win, and we all know our industry needs more good guys. Thanks again for watching and may the prophets be with you.